friends, welcome back. I'm sitting on the front porch. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. We just got home from church a little while ago and the high is 80 today. And I think I wanna give this front porch some love. I still have sad like evergreen branches from Christmas, tra Christmas time in my planters that need refreshed. I've got some dead ferns on the porch. I've got a lot of weeds in my front landscape. Um, and I would love to go buy just a couple flowers, nothing crazy to fill up my window boxes and just get the house looking nice and put together for springtime. Brings me so much joy. It's like one of my favorite things to do in the spring months. So um, I'm gonna go change into some more yard work appropriate clothing, <laughs> but then um, we'll head to the garden center and we'll see what we can find. There is something simply so magical about going to the garden center for the first time in this season. Everything is bursting with color, there's so much life, and it's just fun to see what's out there. Even if you're not ready to buy flowers yet, going, looking around, and just seeing all that the garden center has to offer is always a lot of fun. I ended up picking up two ferns Four, or three actually for the porch which I normally get nine or ten I'm going a little bit lighter this year I'm not gonna hang ferns from the porch like I typically do and that's just because I'm not sure what the next couple of months look like with us moving so I didn't want to go too crazy but I wanted everything to look nice so you can see here I ended up getting some white geraniums these are gonna go in my stone planters I picked up some dianthus and I chose this specifically because it likes part shade as well as the alyssum because my window box doesn't get a ton of sun. Um, I got a bunch of fresh herbs. I've got some nettle here. That's going to be really pretty. Again, likes that part sun. Our home is north facing so we get quite a bit of shade but I love to use rosemary and thyme as fillers and containers. It's so pretty. And now we get to play in the dirt. I just placed everything in this window box, kind of making sure I have what I need and making sure everything looks symmetrical. Um, but you guys remember when Caleb built this window box a few years ago? Goodness, that feels like a long time ago now. And I'm wondering if this is the last time I will plant it up. Kind of sad to think about, but I wanted it to look really nice. I wanted it to transition from spring to summer, which I think it will. The dianthus is such a pretty pop of pink. I just love that. And then all of the different variations of green in here with the thyme and then the nettle. And then in the front here, I ended up doing little pockets of white alyssum. This is one of my favorite flowers to put in containers, window boxes. It spills over the edges as it grows. It fills out really nicely and it smells incredible. I always try to tuck it in anything and everything that I plant in the spring and summer. And then I'm just gonna water everything in, make sure that the dirt is level. And I love how this turned out pretty and pink for the spring months ahead. And I'm really happy it, it adds such a pretty pop of color to the face of my home. And once I finished planting up this window box, I was getting ready to do some pruning. And I looked in this tree and found yet another bird's nest. <laughs> Always such a sweet sign of springtime. But now I'm going to deadhead. These are bobo hydrangeas and I usually keep the blooms, the spent blooms, on all through the winter. I find that it just works better that way and then I usually deadhead up to the nearest bud come springtime. Just get everything fresh, ready for new growth, any day now it's starting to kind of bud out and leaf out and these bobo hydrangeas are so pretty all summer long. I just can't wait to see them. I always look forward to them every year.
Now I've got some helpers with me and we're moving right along to the side of the yard where I'm pruning my limelight hydrangeas. And you can see these have already started to leaf out quite a bit. These are some of my favorites as well, but we're just continuing to deadhead. Caleb and Grayson are weeding and we're getting in the yard looking good. So if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know I often talk about just my mental health and how much the warmer weather months, being outside, planting flowers, benefits me. But something else that has continued to benefit my mental health in the last few months is therapy. And I would like to take a moment and thank our video sponsor today, BetterHelp. We are all so busy and personally as a busy mom and wife and caring for my home and managing a business and trying to stay healthy and juggling a lot of plates, something that I personally struggle with is the feeling of overwhelm. It's easy for me to get overwhelmed quickly with the amount of things I have to do and I tend to get paralyzed by that feeling of overwhelm and my therapist and I have been working through some coping mechanisms to not only emotionally help me handle <laughs> that feeling but also set boundaries in place and learn you know how to feel equipped and ready to tackle each individual day so that I don't feel so stressed and it has been such a blessing. The therapists at BetterHelp are licensed and trained to give you unbiased advice and help to help you with whatever struggles you're going through. And the beautiful thing about BetterHelp is that you can do it from the comfort of your own home or wherever is convenient for you because you can do therapy via video chat so you get to kind of see face to face over the phone, or even through messaging on the app. To get started with BetterHelp, all you have to do is fill out a questionnaire. It just takes a couple minutes and you're gonna answer really basic questions about your own mental struggles and what you're looking for in a therapist. And with BetterHelp, you are matched with a licensed therapist in as little as 48 hours in most cases. I know for me personally, therapy has been life-changing and I know that it can benefit you as well. So if you're struggling or you're looking to start therapy, consider BetterHelp. You can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Amy Fritz or check out the link down in my description below and you'll get 10% off of your first month's therapy. So again, check out that link down below and thanks again BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. And now it's the next morning and we're moving on to the front porch area. It was a little bit too sunny. I let it get too late yesterday. And so I wanted to wait until morning when it was nice and shady to work on this part of the house. And out with the old and with the new, I tossed all of those Christmas greens, moved everything out of the way so that I could wipe down the windows and the door handle and the door and give everything a good sweep clean out all the cobwebs, and just get my front entry feeling welcoming for the springtime. This is by far my favorite wreath that I think I've ever owned for the front door. It is just such a great 
everyday wreath. It's beautiful. It's full. I love the tone of green and I got it from the Home Depot. So I will link that down below as well as anything else I can link. Um, I'm also just putting back my planters that are flanking the front door and I am hitting the easy button today. I'm not going to plant anything in these planters. I'm simply going to just kind of plop in these sword ferns. That way I can move them if I need to when we move or you know if I end up doing something else later on in the season. I just want it to be simple, easy, no fuss. So I will continue to water these right in the planter. They'll drain just fine and doesn't get much easier than that. I also like to put two grapevine wreaths above my planter between the planter and the fern and I think it just looks really pretty. It just adds a little something and some texture. I just went down to the basement and picked some pillow covers I thought would work nicely for the space for the season. I wanted to stick with something very soft and neutral because I really want the green to pop and be the shining star of my front porch. These covers are from Etsy. They're really, really pretty. And of course, I love stripes for the springtime. And then we're going to hit the easy button once again, pull out this sad dead fern and just pop in this Boston fern that looked so healthy, so full and lush. I just love it. I love ferns. The secret is to water them really well, but not every day. Every other day, I find they don't like to have super wet feet, but when they are watered, they like a lot of water. So that seems to work for me. I also use fish fertilizer um, every couple weeks in the summer and that keeps them looking good. But now we're moving on to my stone planters. These are my favorite planters to plant up each season. I just love them. Again, something about the stone and I'm just doing whites and greens and it gives a very formal but still cottage feel kind of that English garden look that is my absolute favorite starting here with the centerpiece I'm just planting up these white geraniums so like I mentioned previously I love to use herbs as a filler in my planters. They add such a pretty pop of green if you're wanting to use a lot of green foliage. And then they usually smell amazing. I'm using rosemary and thyme, which smell wonderful. And they add a bunch of different texture to your container. Not to mention you can cut them and use them in the kitchen. So I love to do this every year. They're also really cold hardy. So I find that you know, I can have rosemary as early as March outside most years, but I'm also tucking in more of that white alyssum into the planter, and I'm actually going to do a border around the entire planter so that from both sides, whether you're looking into the porch or sitting on the porch looking out, there will be alyssum spilling out and smelling really good. <laughs> This one may be my favorite stone planter I've done yet. Something about that white and green, again, just really shines when you stick to a simple color palette with your flowers. Just picking, you know, no more than two colors and then green usually works really well. And just doing the white and green this year is so much fun. I really, really am loving this and I'm excited to see the alyssum continue to really fill out and spill over the planter. And um, here's another look at how it all came together. 
And now one more container for the day. This is gonna go on the table that sits between my two wicker chairs. And same thing, stuck with the color palette, stuck with flowers that prefer shade and just a little bit of sun. So I have some impatience here. I have more of the alyssum. I do have some vinca vine. We'll see how that does. I figure if it fizzles out, I can always just pull it if it doesn't end up working well. But I think it'll get enough sun. So I just quickly kind of just place things at random. This is probably one of the messier containers I've ever done. And honestly, because of the color palette, I think it still looks really pretty. I really like this one, you guys. Now I'm just gonna place this on the table and that is the finishing touch to my spring front porch. And I'm just gonna give you a quick look at how it all came together. It just feels fresh. You know, it's not perfect. I didn't get all the cleaning done, but man, what a difference from the before and after. And it just makes my heart so happy. So thank you for watching today. I hope this video was fun to watch. I hope it gave you some inspiration for your own front porch this spring, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.